Norway's latest investment in NASAMs is less an incremental buy and more a deliberate rewrite of how a Nordic country intends to fight for control of its own airspace. The order, placed with Kongsberg Defence and Aerospace and valued at roughly 1 billion Norwegian kroner, centers on the connective tissue of air defence rather than the most photogenic pieces of kit. By prioritizing command posts, mobile communications nodes, and hardened radios, Oslo is signaling that the decisive edge in a missile and drone era lies in resilient networking, rapid decision making, and the ability to keep sensors and shooters talking under stress. In a region where geography stretches defensive lines along fjords and Arctic approaches, those attributes count for as much as raw launcher numbers. At a practical level, the upgrade swaps out legacy communications gear for Kongsberg's Thor Combat Net Radio and introduces higher capacity, more survivable links between dispersed NASAM's elements. That choice does several things at once. It increases bandwidth to move track data and engagement orders quickly, it multiplies routing options when jamming or attrition disrupts a preferred path, and it better protects the command and control node always the soft spot an adversary tries to crack first. Add wheeled, mobile comms modules and modernized command posts, and the picture is one of batteries designed to hop, re-aggregate, and fight through electronic attack and counter-battery fire without losing the plot. These investments fit the architecture of NASAMs like a glove. Designed as a modular, network-enabled system, NASAMS distributes effectors and sensors across the battle space and stitches them together with a common fire distribution and engagement logic. It can ingest multiple radar types, tap electro-optical sensors, and employ different missile families, most notably AMRAM variants, without sacrificing cohesion. The enduring appeal to the 13 nations who feel that it is not a single magic interceptor, but the system's openness, its ability to accept incremental upgrades, new sensors, and improved software while preserving a familiar operational grammar. Norway's package deepens that grammar by making the the voice between nodes clearer, harder to silence, and faster in its cadence. The operational rationale has been forged in Europe's most brutal laboratory. In Ukraine, where low-flying cruise missiles and one-way attack drones have become a grim routine, NASAMS has earned a reputation for high effectiveness against targets that hug terrain and compress engagement windows. By early 2025, Ukrainian and Norwegian accounts credited NASAMS with roughly 900 successful intercepts and reported effectiveness hovering around the mid-90s percentage range against KH-101-KH-555 cruise missiles and Shahid-type UAVs. Any such figures depend on magazines, queuing, and tactical context, but the lesson is consistent, survivable C2 and robust communications keep kill chains intact when the enemy's first move is to blind and deafen the defender. Norway's geography and alliance posture make these lessons more than academic. The country anchors the gateway between the North Atlantic and the Arctic, a corridor that matters for undersea infrastructure, energy exports, maritime traffic, and the reinforcement routes on which NATO depends. Hardening ground-based air defense across that expanse does not mean saturating every valley with launchers, it means increasing the elasticity and reliability of the network so that radars, passive sensors, and effectors can cooperate at distance, share burdens, and reassign priorities as strikes unfold. Mobile command posts able to displace quickly, and radios that keep their voice in a storm of jamming, complicate an adversary's targeting calculus and stretch the time it takes to suppress a battery to the point of irrelevance. There is also a quiet industrial logic at work. By placing the order with a national champion and securing long lead components, Oslo preserves speed to field and sovereign control over its upgrade pathway while aligning with a multinational user community already accustomed to stepwise improvements. The dollar conversion roughly 95 to 100 million US dollars at recent rates, doesn't capture the value of an upgrade that primarily targets the bottleneck in modern air defense. Almost every European planner now agrees that interceptor stocks, protected communications, and dispersed, redundant C2 are the pillars on which any credible ground-based umbrella rests. Norway's choices go straight at those pillars rather than chasing a headline number of tubes. The doctrinal implications are clear. 
Air defense on the northern flank is moving from static footprints guarding fixed sites to fluid, networked clusters of sensors and shooters that can disperse before a strike, mass effects during it, and vanish afterward. Faster decision loops matter more than ever, not only to put a missile on the right intercept point but to avoid wasting precious shots on decoys or low-priority tracks. Radios with greater throughput and better resilience mean more fidelity in the common operating picture and more agility in handing off engagements across batteries. In a fight where the enemy observes, targets, and fires in minutes, shaving even tens of seconds off the engagement cycle can be the difference between a clean intercept and a hit on infrastructure. For NATO, Norway's move widens the aperture for allied interoperability. Higher capacity, Coalition-friendly radios and modernized command posts make it easier to plug visiting aircraft, radars, and allied ground-based air defense units into a shared picture during exercises or reinforcement. That matters in a region where Sweden and Finland's accession rounds out a truly Nordic air defense ecosystem, and where combined training is no longer a diplomatic aspiration but a military routine. A more networked Norwegian NASAM's grid becomes not just a national shield but a host platform through which itinerant allied sensors and shooters can flow. None of this downplays the persistent challenges. Magazine depth remains the unforgiving arithmetic of air defense, and any network, no matter how hardened, can be stressed by saturation raids or sustained attrition. But an architecture that pushes survivability into the C2 layer and insists on dispersion, mobility, and flexible topology makes each interceptor round count for more. It also buys time for replenishment and complicates the saturation calculus for an adversary who must now find and target more moving pieces that refuse to cluster for convenience. The timing of the purchase lines up with a broader Scandinavian shift since 2022, Assume that drones and cruise missiles will remain cheap, abundant, and politically useful, build networks that survive the first blows, and plan for coalition operations from day one. The Norwegian order formalizes that assumption set. It pairs sovereign control, through a domestic prime and user-driven spiral development, with alliance-enabled interoperability. It treats radios and command posts not as supporting cast but as core combat power. And it builds an air defense posture calibrated for the high north, where weather, distance, and limited infrastructure reward systems that can think and move as much as they can shoot. In the end, the NASM's upgrade is a bet on brains over brawn. By investing in command posts that can jump, radios that can endure, and software that can knit together diverse sensors and missiles, Norway is shaping an air defense lattice that is harder to find, tougher to silence, and quicker to react. In a theater where strategic warning may be short and strike packages will aim to blind before they bruise, that bet looks prudent. It reinforces national protection of forces and critical nodes, strengthens NATO's northern shield, and aligns Norwegian practice with the real-world evidence gathered nightly over Ukraine. As European defense planning evolves, Oslo's approach offers a template, protect the network, and the network will protect everything else.